Thank you, George and Eliza. Thank you for having the courage to stand up here and do it and try something. Um, that is how we grow and how we learn. Um, we, we have the courage to stand up and, and say, hey, you know, if I make a mistake, that's, that's a part of it, and, and I'm, I'm going to do it. Brandon Brown says, I'm going to live my life in the arena. Anybody else Brandon Brown fans out there? There we go. <laughs> Good work, Brandon and Eliza. Um, well, this brings us to the prayers of the day and the Lord's Prayer. Christ has risen from the grave. Christ has forgiven our sins, and we dare to come near to Christ to pray and to ask for things we want, and also to ask for things Christ wants, to ask uh, for the, the things that break our hearts, for the things that, that uh, the people we're ministering to, all of our joys and all of our concerns. And so, what is on your heart today that you want to share with the St. John's community? I would love to hear from you. David? Uh, I just want to say happy Easter to everybody. Happy Easter to everybody. <laughs> Yeah. 
in accordance with the scriptures. And that he was buried. And that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. And that he appeared to Cephas. That's Peter, by the way. Then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James. Then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to someone untimely born, who appeared also to me. That's, that's Paul who's writing this, although you want to apply it to yourself, I won't argue with you. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecute the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace towards me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I work harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that's in me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim to you, and so you have come to believe. All right, I'm going to do a thing. I'm going to, I, I think people don't like it when I do this thing, but sometimes I just can't help it. Uh, so this is not scripture right now. This is me talking. You see, I, I put it down. All right, this is, I'm going to do a commentary in the middle of it. So that's like a whole creed, right? Like you put those are different ands. Those are like bullet points. They serve as, as uh, this is the stuff we all believe. We believe this. And so he roots the resurrection. That the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ in like actual historical fact. He says it matters that this is true, that it really happened. This is more than a metaphor. This is the stuff that we believe. This is and and like get it right. Like these are, you can get all four of the points here. Okay. Then he does a therefore, and what he does with the therefore is it just takes it to another level. All right. Now, if Christ is proclaimed as raised.
how you're doing. Like, like, I think it matters what your entry posture is, like where you're coming from to get here today. And I, and I kind of suspect that most of us kind of aren't doing so good. Like it's, it's been a little bit of a ringer of a couple of years. Um, and there's, maybe, maybe there's some wounds even that are like a little scattered over, but they're like just still, you know, like I don't know, I, I, I've seen people who are like, you know, my, my closer friends who we can get real with each other, like, hey, how, no seriously, how's it going today? And they're like, well, like, pretty good. I mean, I, mean, I haven't had a panic attack for like six hours. <laughs> right? Like, that's a good day. It's a lot better than eight months ago. And, and this text, I mean, it deals with that. Like, it, this is a text that brings us ultimately to a place where, where Christ is going to put every enemy under his feet. And, and, and they're all going to be destroyed. And if you're wondering what an enemy of God is like, like we're not talking about like Richard Dawkins or someone. We're talking about like death. That's an enemy. Right? We're, we're talking about like um, racism. We're talking about like pollution, destruction, God's creation. Like we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get rid of all that stuff. And and the way you know is because 2,000 years ago, we're, we, we've been saying 2,000 years ago for a long time. It's, we're getting closer. If we assume 1833, which, you know, the number is fuzzy, but um, we're, getting, we're getting closer. 1,990 years ago, uh, there was a tomb, and, and they, they put God in the tomb, and he got out. And, and what that means, like, like, there's like three levels here, right? There's, so, so level one is that means that like Christianity is true, right? Like it's, it's not, it's not supposed to be just a religion. It's not supposed to be like something that you believe in like the, the religion part of your brain, but like the real world's over here and the spiritual world is this other thing. Right? Like it's, the, 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 this needs to have happened at a time and place in history. And if it didn't, then, then it does, it's no good for it. <laughs> and in fact, it could be really bad if it didn't happen. But it did. I mean, we've got these witnesses and like, we're actually like fact checking, right? It's important to have fact checkers. Um, like there are, there are witnesses who saw it and you can talk to them. And some of them didn't want to see it. Like one of them mentioned explicitly is James. That's, that's his brother that was like really embarrassingly not believing in Jesus while he was alive. And then after he was humiliated and crucified, James was like, you know, I changed my mind actually. There's something to this Jesus guy. Why, James? Why, why would you, at the point that he lost, change, change your mind? Well, he didn't lose actually. I saw him rise from the dead. There was a miracle and I'm a witness to it and that's why. So now I'm following Jesus. These kinds of things. So that's level one. And like that's, like some years, some Easter's, that's been my sermon, right? Like an apologetics, evidence for the resurrection, real, true, real. But this year, I want to go deeper with you. So I just, I need you to like preach yourself that sermon. Can you do that for me? Right? First Corinthians 15, like, like 1 to 11-ish, right? Like that's, that's on you guys. All right? But then. He starts dealing with this, this group of people uh, that, that, that say they believe in Jesus, but say they don't believe in the resurrection of the dead. Which is a weird thing, right? Because like, if you ask a Christian, hey, do you believe in the resurrection? You say, well, yeah, of course I believe in the resurrection. I believe in the resurrection of Jesus, right? That's what you mean by the resurrection. I, I just said it like 20 seconds ago, right? Apologetics evidence for the resurrection. When we say the resurrection, we're talking about the resurrection of Jesus. Okay, but, but Paul, to, to the church in Corinth, is like, no, I actually need you to believe in the resurrection of you. 
So how you doing? Great. Yeah. Well, what's up? He is risen, and also with you. Right? Seriously, it's it's one thing to believe that Jesus rose from the dead, and and it's it's a different thing to believe that like he rose from the dead metaphorically than to believe that he rose from the dead actually, like historically in, in real like flesh and blood, rose from the dead. Put your hands in the nail holes. True, right? Like actual, true, true. But then there's this other level that it's it's another thing entirely beyond that to believe that you're going to rise from the dead, which flies in the face of the thing that I know is thought and been told growing up, which is that um, my body's going to die, and then my Spirit is going to go up to heaven, and all the spirits are, and so there's like a ghost that leaves my body, and then we live in heaven, and heaven is this like spiritual category of place, right? And that's what these people who said there's no resurrection probably believed, right? They're like, oh yeah, no, like, we're going to get rid of the body, and slough off this, this mortal coil, and then we're going to just, you know, be spiritual beings. It's, it's this heresy called Gnosticism, right? It says the flesh is bad. Everything earthly and secular is bad, and only the religious things are good. And Paul says, no, no, you don't understand. You're, you're going to die. Your, your body is going to get destroyed, but you're going to get a new body in flesh and blood. And there's going to be a new kingdom, a kingdom of God, and it's it's here. Like, it's, it's now at hand. You, and so if you say that that's not going to happen, then, then what do you think happened to Jesus? Right? Like, Jesus rose and walked around on earth. And, and you are going to rise and, and walk around on earth. Now, to be clear, there are some people who uh, think, like, in the meantime, like, until the last day, Which is, it's not contradicted in scripture. Um, it's not really well attested to. There's one line of the thief on the cross. Um, uh, you know, Jesus says to the thief on the cross, I tell you today you will be with me in paradise. And so that thief apparently went to paradise that day. Unless he was telling him today. But, but regardless, like the, the, the takeaway is actually that like the way Jesus was raised, the, the actual like, shape of Jesus' resurrection, that's, that's the first fruits of, of the way you're going to be raised, of your eternal life. Um, that, that what was put in the ground perishable was raised imperishable. And so just like every year, you know, you get the, if you're a gardener, you get the first flowers, you get the first tomatoes, and you, you cut those and eat those, and then the big crop comes. Right? That's how Jesus is. Jesus proves that there's a world coming in which every problem, including the problem that like people have died in the past, is going to be solved. We're not just going to solve the problem that like people are going to die, that people get old and die, but like we're going to take the people who have already died, the dead in Christ, and they're going to be raised. God's going to raise them from the dead. And then we're going to live forever. And that just changes Christianity so utterly. And takes it from a thing that you think. Takes it from a thing that you um, imagine. And makes it into a, a thing that you live. Because all the stuff that you've heard about heaven, all the stuff that you've heard when... Uh, when we kind of had that previous model um, where, you know, ghosts fly out of bodies and go to a cloudy place. Um, and, and to some degree, you know, we know, oh wait, but it's not actually cloudy, right? Or, or we're not, it's some, uh, originally, like when Bugs Bunny did it, and when you were young, you probably believed early on that it was like angels, right? Like you die and you become an angel. 
And then at some point you probably learn, no, it's not angels, right? You, you, you become a spirit, you're still a person, but like, but, but then, but then now it's going to be another, you're going to be a person. You're going to be a whole, whole being with, with like a perfected material existence. And if you've ever heard a preacher tell you that, um, that like heaven can start today, your eternal life can start now, then that becomes so, so much more of a possibility for you when you realize that, that the kingdom of heaven isn't a cloud of ice, isn't, isn't a, a, a far away other dimension. It's actually a future place. It's actually a place that right here, right now, we're building together. And you have an opportunity now, so if you want streets paved with gold, then lay a gold brick. And, and all of this stuff that's not any good, that, that doesn't belong in heaven, or, or even the stuff that's like scaffolding. You know, sometimes we, we create stuff and it gets us to the next thing. Um, all, all of that stuff, the good stuff is what's going to stay. And the stuff that we try and fail, and the stuff that, that was a lily pad that we moved on to where we're headed, um, then that stuff is going to go away. But the stuff we do here and now echoes in eternity. The life that we live here and now, you're alive right now. You're alive in Jesus Christ, and you're never going to stop being alive. There, there's going to be a minute, you know, we're really dead in Christ, and you'll be, the, the New Testament term is asleep. But, but then the next thing, you ever, you ever take a nap like that? You like close your eyes for a second and you're training or something and you open them and you're there? That's what it's going to feel like. You can close your eyes and then you're going to open them and it's the new kingdom. And Jesus is here and so is Grandma and Annie Ann. That's the vision. Jesus is risen and also with you. Amen.